This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. And good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Friday, Friday, June 17th, and it's a little after 11 (laughs) o'clock in the morning. And once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for today's show. And today we're going to speak about what is happening in Abaco, right? Uh, And in order to facilitate this, um, we will have a conversation uh, with Marsh Harbor, and Spring City Township Chairman, and also Central Abaco District Council Member and Local Government uh, Representative, uh, Roscoe Thompson. I know I have him on Zoom. I just want to make sure that he's on and that he's listening to me and that all is well. Uh, Roscoe, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good. Uh, And sorry for the late start, uh, Roscoe. I just had some technical difficulties. But before we start our conversation, I want to give out a gift bag. I know it's Father's Day. Father's Day, and I have goodies. I have one goodie, actually. And I want the first person who calls in and gets through will get uh, to take advantage of the gift bag made available of trinkets and stuff, good stuff like that from Guardian Radio. And so call in, and hopefully you'll be that particular person. So good luck with that, right? And you just leave your call in and leave your name with the producer there, right? I guess she'll put the passion through and then you write down the information and you can always come up and collect your items on Monday, right? So start with you there, Roscoe. How are you doing, first of all? Hey, I'm good. Just so you know, Ben Hatton from the Abaco Chamber of Commerce decided to join us too, so he's on the Zoom meeting. Um, and I welcome you, Mr. Hatton. I, I heard good things about you, and um, I was wondering if you would, would, would be able to make it, so I'm glad to hear that you are present, uh, because I would like to know what the Chamber of Commerce is doing in Abaco to facilitate its growth and, and its rebirth, right? Like, I know you're going through some trying areas, uh, uh, trying time at this present time, but before I uh, make sure I hear, Ken, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, good morning. Good. I'm going to bring you in right after I ask um, Roscoe a question on what is happening on the ground, and then I want you to chime in also and, 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 and give your opinions on that, and then give me an outline of what's happening uh, with the chamber. Okay? Chamber. So go ahead, Roscoe. What is happening on the ground since Dorian, since the, the, the lockdown for, due to um, COVID-19, and since the change of government? Right? I know that you are a representative for the district council. And recently in the news, um, Spring Point had these, um, what you call those, shut, shut, those white doom like, and the government has announced that, hey, you all have to get ready to move, right? And I'd like to know your commentary on all of that. So I'm going to let you speak for a good three, four, five minutes on board that so I can understand what's happening. All right, well, let me just uh, say a good afternoon, good morning, Bahamas. Uh, Yesterday, we had a town hall meeting uh, put on by the Marsh Harbor Spring City Township, actually in Spring City. And that was one of the concerns that were brought up was still about the domes. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things are concerning, you know, are, are the people in there that are supposed to be in there, a lot of people left. Uh, do the names match the ones staying in there? There is still a need for that housing at this point in time because those 40 domes, I don't know how many families they house, but they have nowhere to go. And I know it's not government's responsibility to build a home for for those people. But But Roscoe, what do you mean they don't have any place to go? I don't understand that. What do you mean they don't have any place to go? Well, they lost their house. It might have been under the mortgage corporation. It might have been, you know, uh, people displaced from rental units. 
uh, a lot of, you know, it's a lot of contributing factors. Um, and are these regard. people Bahamian or are these are? Uh... No, they, most of them are Bahamians. Most of, most are Bahamians there in, in the Spring City Domes. Um, I do know, or I was informed yesterday that the DRA and social services are supposed to be doing a informative uh, walkabout and getting the names of people that are in there to make sure they correspond with. Yeah, I see the minister said they, they've done that already. That's why they're able to st say that these people do not match and that these are, weren't impacted by, by the hurricane. So they are not supposed to be in these some, domes. Right. Some, some CA, some were, some of them have been rented out by people that were in them. Mm -hmm. uh, some people moved into them when they freed up. You know, we, I just found out yesterday, there's a, a lady with five children that is, um, was living in a a building in Murphy Town, and God rest her soul, you know, in in this regard. But there is that's what they were there for is to assist people like that, you know, um, you know. So you 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 have people that aren't supposed to be in there, and then you have people that need to be in there because they just don't have nowhere else to go right now. So you're uh, telling me that it has moved from persons who who supposed to be there because of the hurricane to the place where these people need to be there because there's no other place for them at this present time is that what you're saying Cor correct in in some instances there are there are people there that need there are people there that are actually you know we had reports of people that rented out the domes and we had people that moved out um some people just moved in that you know needed a place to live um because there was there was nothing okay let me it's, speak to it's go ahead no it's just it's a it's sad and it's you know it's depressing in a way to know what has happened because what plan was put into effect you 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 built the domes but what were we going to do after, if you remove those 40 domes, where are those families going? You know, that's my question that, you know, there has to be some resolve in terms of, do you offer them to, you know, offer them to buy property so they could build through the mortgage corporation or housing? You know, I, I don't know what the answer is or what the solution is, but it, it it needs to be addressed because I know that they said somebody said by August they have to be out, but I, I just don't see that happening. So Mr. Hutton, let me bring you into the conversation. And and, and I know that the Chima promotes business, promotes commerce, right? I want to know the temperament of the business section in Abaco, which will, I assume, in, uh, will facilitate these people to be able to afford homes, to, to start their lives. How is the business, how is commerce in Abaco at this present time? And what exactly is the, 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 the Abaco business of commerce doing uh, to promote business and, and stuff like that? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, um, yeah, I mean, business here, uh, you know, it gets a little bit better every day. Um, the, the problem that we have, you know, directly relates to this, um, to the housing problem is that there is, there is literally, there is no housing here. Uh, there's no place for people to live, to, to rent. Um, you know, it's great that the government is putting these programs together for single family homes. That's wonderful, but that's not what's a critical need right now. Critical need is multifamily units, duplexes, triplexes, things like that, apartments, condos, um, none of which qualified for any kind of aid after the storm because they were considered commercial properties. So we have, uh, we still have a vast number of duplexes and triplexes here that could be rentable if they were fixed up. But those owners, obviously they didn't have the money to fix it up because, you know, if you had a mortgage, um, the insurance money was taken by the bank or if it wasn't insured, you know, the, the money just wasn't there to rebuild it. So we've got a lot of, um, you know, potential housing units that aren't being repaired and there's no program in place to help 
uh, get them back on into the inventory, into into the room inventory here. Uh, you know, there's been a number of discussions we've had with government related to, you know, prospective projects that could come in and do multifamily houses, that could do condos, that could do apartments. But um, it's been, you know, the vast majority has been complete non-response to any of that. And I hear you, and I'm concerned, right? Because it's, it's definitely sound as if there's a housing crisis happening in Abaco. And, Absolutely. And um, it, it seems dire. And I don't know necessarily understand and can appreciate the population of Abaco in contrast to how, how, much, how much shortage there exists. Um, does the Chamber of Commerce, can they assist with the inventory that government is aware of how starking the problem is? Well, I mean, the, the Chamber of Commerce, we're, we're sort of, we are the representative of the business community, you know, but we are not in a position to actually, you know, be the investor or the funder or the developer. That's not what we do. Um, you know, what we do is, is we um, represent the interests of the business community to government. So, you know, we, we say to the government, hey, you know, the businesses here, we, we're, we're, we want to expand, but we can't expand because we can't hire more people because there's nowhere for those people to live. Or, you know, we want to have a, a developer come in and, and build a, a new, you know, small resort or something like that, but they can't because there's nowhere for his workers to live. So, yeah, I mean, the, the housing situation here is really sort of the, the critical block to development happening here and until we can get uh, enough rental units for for people you know everyone you know not everyone's going to buy a house a lot of people just want to rent a lot of yes. people are going to be in and out and and they and a rental property is the only thing they want um it, it can't be an all or nothing it can't be all single family homes and nothing i think it needs to be a two-pronged or multi-pronged approach um because we have to get over this hump of housing otherwise abaco is going to be you know, stuck in this situation forever going forward. Okay, right now I'm speaking to Roscoe Thompson and Ken Hutton, who are residents of Abaco. Um, Ken Hutton is the chairman of the Chamber, Abaco Chamber of Commerce, and Roscoe Thompson is a district council mm -hmm. member of local government um, in city, Spring City Township and Marsh Abbey. And where do you live exactly, um, Roscoe, before I go to my... I live, I live in the center of Marsh Harbor. Nice. And, and you have a long history of being uh, of being an Abakunian. But um, let me get to the caller so I can see, give up my gift right now. So go ahead, first caller. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yay, I'm the first caller. You are the first caller. Mind you, I expected a, a, a gentleman. But I cannot I have just, a gentleman in I, my life. And this is father. why I shall celebrate you. I yeah. shall celebrate you because you are first and that you have a good gentleman in your life. And he is worthy to be praised. Oh, yes, So leave your number. Uh, with the producer, um, because I only have one gift for this Father's Day, and extend to your per, the person in your life Happy Father's Day and cherish I, him for this day. Okay, I and, will. Thank you very much. And you can pick up the gift. It's it's a gift bag, a lot of trinkets and items uh, made by Guardian Radio, and um, you can pick it up at at the Guardian outside. I mean outside <laughs> to the desk. And, I'm a day. I'm a daily caller, so thank oh, you good, very much. good, and thank you very much for calling in. So Thank back you. to Roscoe and, and Ken, right? Roscoe, during COVID, pre-COVID, um, post-Dorian storm, um, there was a conversation about the farm, right? Which is a, I'm trying to describe the, the community itself, a community of Bahamians, some Bahamians, and... Uh, immigrant nationals who have migrated to the Abaco area to live, right? And I know there was a, a stop of asking, having people bill on it, right? Um, and I would like to know what is happening now in that, that, that area uh, called the, oh. called the, um, the well, farm. Well, that's North Abaco. And um, right now, I, I really, there is some, let me rephrase and say, you know, you said pre-Dorian. We also had the mud and the peas. But I, I think the mud and the peas doesn't exist anymore, is it? No, it doesn't exist anymore. But you have to remember there's, you know, probably 3,000 people that were displaced. Um, we won't go into how many of the lives were lost there. But, you know, you had that displacement of those people that now have 
gone up to the farm or, you know, they're in other areas um, building um, illegally, unfortunately. Uh, government, government needs to address that situation um, head on. And I mean, it's something that we talked about at council last night, you know, with it, it's a minister, it's minister of immigration, minister of works, minister of environmental health, uh, the attorney general. It's a, it's a, you know, it has to be a, a soul head on with all these departments to address what is going on because what is happening in our area going down, you have crown land that, you know, people have started building on illegally. And now at one point there was two or three houses there. And now you have 30 and 40 houses there. So and it moved from more. three to like 30 and, now and, and some, on and, some crown land. Right. And you also have a Bahamian that had some crown land or agricultural land that is actually leasing uh, property for foreign nationals to build, um, which is illegal. You, if you hold the crown lease, you know, application um, and, and you're the lease, you cannot lease or sublease your crown land out. Uh, so it's it's a touchy situation because, you know, if you go in there and you knock down those 40 homes, and some of them are Bahamians, do not get me wrong, Bahamian, you know, by birth. Um, where do they go? Where do they you go? Know, so it's a it's it's a two pro, it's a two for, two prong process in, in in regards to yes, we have to address that situation. What way do we go about it? Is there you know, and this was presented to many administrations before, even even me, um, saying find some land, uh, allow the ones that are here legally to purchase and open it up to all Bahamians, you know, so you're not just isolating a foreign national community, you're actually integrating into society. Because a lot of the homes are being built or wood that's being removed from the landfill site, you know, truckloads and truckloads leave every day mm -hmm. from the dump site and they're, they're building houses with them. Um, and also if, if we, this was discussed last night, one of the areas that they built, they have a chain at night, they chain it across so you can't come down. And mind you, I'm, I'm having that, Cheating of cross of or making private subdivisions in the, in New Providence also. This seems to be like a common trend now, where they block certain people are blocking off roads as if they they own it. But I want to bring back Ken again. Ken, the budget just gone, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask, what or, or how does the current budget benefits Abaco? Uh, uh, anything inside there that you say, wow, I appreciate that. Thanks. You know, this this will definitely help us in Abaco. Uh, I think the one thing that stands out is the the formation of I guess they call it I can't remember the exact name but it's like a, a family island development fund which will take the road traffic fees and a percentage of the property taxes that are generated by the island and return them to the island as a um, as a fund to help the continued development and maintenance of the island and I think the first year it's 10% um, of road traffic fees and property taxes get returned to the to the community. And I think it goes up to 25% within two or three years. So, you know, that that's really encouraging. I think that that's um, quite far reaching and it could be very beneficial, um, you know, as long the, 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 but the devil's in the detail, you know, who is gonna manage this fund. It's, I, I guess it's gonna be structured a lot like a, a sovereign wealth fund. So how is that fund going to be um, structured? Who's going to be on those board? Who's going to have the say over what um, what gets um, bought or, or, you know, what the expenses are, are going to be covered? You know, is there going to be a role for local government? Is it going to be an independent board? There's a lot of questions on how it's going to be structured, but I think overall it was a very good idea and, and uh, I, I hope it works out. 
Good. I see I have some callers there, and they may want to ask you some questions. So, producer, let me let me interject ahead. something just real quick, um, CA. Mm -hmm. And I I do appreciate that the prime minister brought that up at our local government conference. But let me refine rem, remind it, his wording was up to ten percent. So ah, the devil's in the details. You, yeah, that means that it could be two percent. It could be three percent. It could be four percent. I think 10% was the max, but he said up to 10%. So I just want just want to clarify that. Okay. Yeah, that's in the first year, but the, the wording and the order was up to, again, good point, up to 25% within two to three years. Nice. And, and I'm hoping that you get a full 25% and that you, the chamber and the local government is able to engage and partner with government to facilitate and, and, and gear and, and tunnel what the project should be and what is urgent. And that's what I'm concerned of. You know, we at centralized government tend to say what is good for the family islands and not necessarily involve family islanders, family, family islanders right. in, a, in a crucial decision. But let me go to the callers. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? I, have, I can't hear him. Caller, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put your question. You know, your, your, your guest, he, he brought up a point that I always try to, 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 to speak to, you know, uh, very often, you know, that that is the need for public housing. You know, these single family dwelling homes, it doesn't uh, 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 stop the need for housing in the Bahamas. You know, our government needs to build public housing. And see, and like your guest said, when... when when the chain of commerce or private companies and investors get involved with public housing, yeah, that's not that's you know that's not their job because their their job is just to they 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 are they are there for their shareholders. They have to seek the interests of their shareholders, and it'll never be in the interest of the public good. So our government needs to deal with the situation before it gets out of hand. It's already out of hand in Nassau, you see, and. What they need to do is do the urban renewal in Nassau. You know, urban renewal is is is, is, is tearing down and 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 and, 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 and reconstructing the, the entire block by block and the like. You know, and and putting in schools and parks and whatever's needed, police stations and the like. The businesses that that you know, this man is talking about. People want to come and bring in business, but 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 they don't have people to work because of housing issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and the caller raised some serious questions about urban renewal. Is there an urban renewal center in Abaco at this present time? No, not that I am aware of. Okay. And, and perhaps that's maybe the next thing, uh, because it sounds like Abaco wants to grow and wants to grow quickly. And we, knew, we know that before the hurricane that... People were arguing that Abaco is whether the second city or, or the third city because of how much commerce was happening there. And the idea that the, the island had a pause and they want to grow so quickly, it, it definitely seems to be a need for an active urban <coughs> renewal center. They are partner with the chamber and partner with the local government to make things happen. But I still want to ask a question to Ken. Um, is Abaco prepared to pay more taxes to make these things happen? Because I see you all trying to duck the, the, the VAT tax. Well, no. Okay, well, <laughs> all right, you, you brought it up. We are not ducking the VAT tax. What happened is, the, you know, if you want to get down to brass tax, prior to Dorian, Abaco contributed 27% of govern, government revenue from 6% of the population. Of that, we received back far less so when you're talking about Abaco trying to duck uh, revenue or, or, or duck paying its own fair share, I think it's fair to say that Abaco has never received its fair share. It's never received back what it put in. So the fact that all we're asking for is time and a couple of concessions for us to get back on our feet, that in my opinion, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a dishonest argument mm -hmm. to say that we're trying to duck anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we were completely wiped out. 98% of structures in central Abaco were destroyed or seriously or severely damaged. Um, in, in less than three years, uh, anyone who's come up here would be absolutely amazed by what we have done in spite of the, the challenges we've had, you know, particularly COVID, which knocked us out for about a year and a half. And the stuff that's been accomplished here has been absolutely amazing. So to say that that we're looking to duck our 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 
our responsibilities in terms of, of revenue generation, I think is an unfair argument. I would say that right after the storm, Abaco was promised three years of VAT and duty free in order to rebuild. And everyone was fine with that because we knew all things being equal and, and in spite of you know not knowing COVID was around the corner, that we could get back on our feet and be that revenue driver again. Okay, now we've basically had maybe a year to rebuild. And so I don't think that it's unfair. I don't think that it's, um, I, I think it's unfair to say that we're looking to take something that, that we really aren't uh, entitled to. And I hate to use the word entitled, but something, you know, if you want Abaco to get back and be that big money generator again, then get your foot off our neck and let us get back to normal. And then we can turn the tap on again. Okay, Ken, a follow-up question. What all is needed then? What do you think the government needs to do to assist and help Abaco? I think the government just needs to, in many ways, uh, let Abaco be Abaco. Um, stop putting your nose in on, uh, and um, restricting growth. I mean, I can tell you, you know, from personal experience, because I have a business here, you know, we're supposed to have duty and VAT free through the through December 1st of this year, which is official. Since uh, since the beginning of the year, that's basically disappeared. Uh, every week, Customs and Ministry of Finance adds more things that have to be dutiable and VAT payable without telling us. So, you know, one week you bring in your power tools and they're they're coming under the SIRS duty and VAT free. The next time you bring them in 10 days later, it's all dutiable and VATable. And they haven't told anybody. And we've, we've written letter after letter to say, can you give some clarity on exactly what is dutiable and VATable so that we can give some stability to our customers and to the people here so they, they can budget. Okay. And we've received absolutely no response from government, period. I have a text here that says, government housing program should not be an Nassau, but it should be an Abaco. And let's see what this next one says. It says, you're being asking for tax exemption and, and, and no one has no information, but I guess that's agreeing with you. But um, we, we, I have, we've asked for clarity and we've received none. Okay. I have another text, another caller there. Uh, producer, put that caller through before we go on commercial. Go ahead, caller. Hello, hello, hello. Am I still the first person to call through this morning? No, unfortunately, we have another person who secured that. Oh, right? because you see, my daughter got and called the wrong time. Uh, it happens, <laughs> but, but happy Father's Day to you and blessings no, no, to I'm your loved one. I'm a mother. I, I, I'm a, I, I have a friend who listen to God in every month from 6 o'clock until it's finished. Okay, and I appreciate that. I may have to leave something special for you, but I, I'll do that on another day. But thanks very much for calling. Okay. Uh, Roscoe, hey, uh, what is happening to the NGOs? Once upon a time, you had the number of NGOs there helping and assisting, and it seems as if that's not happening anymore. What, what, what went? What changed? Well, I mean, think about it. After the hurricane, we were the the eyes and ears of the world, and then COVID hit and really hindered us with the NGOs. At that point, there were a couple that were still here. Uh, All Hands and Hearts, Samaritan's Purse, uh, Abaco One Foundation, uh, Abaco Strong, um, some of the church yeah, groups. Yeah. Uh, what else, Ken? G G E R three. So, yeah. what about local NGOs who were there on the ground assisting? Are, are they still there at least? Um, you have, I think, Abaco Strong is Abaco one Strong of the and Idea Relief are, are, are and still Idea there. Relief are still here. Um, which, which, let me tell you, CA, I have to reiterate what Ken had in in regards to the VAT and duty free, and it's something that we continuously bring up. You know, move the red tape. Let us get back on our feet, and then tax us to death. I well, let me not say tax us to death but tax us. We're willing to pay our fair share. It's just that so many promises were made to the Abaco people from the FNM and then during election campaign by Brave Davis and the PLP. And the red tape that's in place makes it so difficult. I have two businesses at this time that have applied and got permission under the SERS order and they needed extra equipment. Well, 
extra parts for their machinery and they want to charge him $21,000 or $27,000 VAT duty on it. And, you know, I called and I said, hey, listen, this is under their SIRS order. Well, you know, I hate to say it, but then I have to go to the member of parliament and then I, you got to go to the minister of finance and hopefully they get it straight out. But it's things like this that are hindering the growth of Abaco. Yeah, and that's that's very concerning to me. It's hindering Marsh Harbor too, because a lot of these places, you know, one is a food store. The other example I could use is a marina that is underway, marina restaurant. Uh, you know, that that are getting hassled that have approval for the SIRS and the SIRS order that was is an, an economic recovery zone. So you want to get your economy recovered because then then you can go back and tax them give us a break take away the red tape Roscoe and Ken, how much time do you need though how much how much no. long, how long this exemption should CA, be ca listen give us till december but take away the red tape that you have right now on us so you are changing the duty and the vat structure on everything nobody knows from one week to another week what is duty or vat free so okay, can you, you support that time timeline December? But I have tape? no problem with that at this point in time. Anything is good. They, they they are saying now you can apply if your home was demolished or your business, you could apply and get it, you know, get it done. Do you know the paperwork and the what it is to get approval? Sometimes people are waiting months before they get their paper stamp. It, it's it's unrealistic. <laughs> but can I why you going to support that timeline? Um, you know, obviously I, my, I'm wearing a business hat. Uh, I, I think the timeline to December, I think is, is particularly with all the, the red tape that's going on that Ross is absolutely right about. I would prefer one more year and then, you know, that's it. Uh, because again, you got to remember we lost a year and a half because of COVID. And why do you think government is so resistant to this? I mean, I've heard you on other programs before asking this evening again. I've heard Thompson again asking this. And all, both governments, both administrations uh, seem to be, uh, you're all asking too much. You know, what you expect from us. So I, I want to know why you think there's a resistance. What is Abaco prepared to give up? Well, CA, what, what about the bat on gas right now? Okay, $8 a gallon. Government's getting 80%. Um, eight, eight, 80 cents on a gallon of gas, not including the dollar 25 that they get on the tax anyway. Why don't they cut, put a soft cap on the, the bat? Give the Bahamian people a break. People are still running generators. The people in the domes, living in the domes, have to run generators. There are people still running generators. Ken was absolutely right. We lost a year and a half with COVID. And under the PLP, when they came in, how they were going to help Abaco and do this, do that for Abaco. Let me tell you something. A promise is a comfort to a fool. Go ahead, Ken. I want to hear your commentary on that. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the VAT cap on, on fuel, we wrote a letter, the, the Chamber of Commerce wrote a letter to the government on March 9th requesting a five cent cap on VAT on fuel. We never got a response. They didn't even acknowledge that they'd received the letter. And this is, you know, this is back on March 9th. So it tells you, you know, how long we've been working on this and, and the lack, complete lack of response that we're getting on, on this issue and, and other issues, most issues. Ken, give me three, three things you would like the government to do. Three, three, top three, the three mean things. So I can help promote, so I can help bring it up, bring it about, go ahead. Sure. Uh, I mean, automatically, the, the extension of the SERS in its entirety, at least until December 2023. The capping of VAT on gasoline and diesel. And the um, a special, I guess, entity that can be created, a private public entity that can be created to focus on multifamily housing development in Abaco. And, and one more, go ahead. one more is is get our port back into compliance because nothing's been done with our port 
since the storm. And Thompson, what about local government? Do you need more power? Yeah, we 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 are a punching board for central government uh, in, in that regards. Uh, we take a lot of the brunt for the members of parliament and government. We we have the authority to do so much, but there the problem is the central government isn't going to give local government more authority because it then decentralizes it, because then that means we are able to make decisions on our own. See, I'll give you an example. In 17 years, we have yet to receive an increase in our budget in this township and most places throughout Abaco, and I could say throughout the Bahamas and local government. Our budget is $283,000, 87 to 80, 87, 90% of our budget goes to garbage collection and road verges for the two townships of Marsh Harbor and Spring City. Inflation has risen. Uh, people are moving back, you know, and, and we can't even get an increase. It, it's very disturbing that they, they seem to not want to work with local government, I guess is the way to, to say it. Okay. So we're talking to Ken Hutton and, of course, my friend Roscoe Thompson. Um, we're going to take a commercial, quick commercial break and, and be back on that side. Call, I saw you calling. Forgive me. So if you call now, I'll bring you in on the next side of the break. This is Guardian Radio in the AM. A local paper in Grand Bahama is back every Tuesday as a section of the Nassau Guardian. Available at local stores, gas stations, pharmacies, Western Bakery, and Bellevue Gifts. Daily and, of course, on Tuesdays, too. Want to reach your Grand Bahama audience? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578. Message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads, too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. And welcome back to Guardian Radio in the AM. This is C.A. Nuri, and I'm having a conversation with some, with some residents in Abaco, um, namely a representative from the Chamber of Commerce and also local government there. And they have some concerns. They have some concerns, and they're asking for help. They're asking for some ex extension. Um, they're asking for VAT to be limited and curtailed for a minute, just for an additional year so they can catch themselves up. But I have some callers where I've been neglecting, so let me go straight to the, the, the line. Go ahead. Caller. Hi, good morning again. Good morning. Uh, listen, I am so sad to hear what these guys are saying because I don't believe that um, the New Day government that came in with, 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 with this this way to rescue Abaco um, from the, the neglect of the SNM government um, riding on white horses with swords of blazing uh, uh, are doing this to them. It's really sad. Because all this time I thought Abaco was being taken care of. You understand? And I agree with them with the with the, the rental complex and, and stuff like that because for, even in Nassau, we need something like that in order to accommodate the amount of persons who can't even afford to purchase a home. But for Abaco, after all this, been through alongside COVID, um, I think they would give them back that year and a half law to try and recoup and, and see that as being at least partially fair. But they, they, they're not being fair, and they're in the house making it sound like they, they got it all figured out. That's, 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 that's sad. Thank you very much, caller. I appreciate your input. Is there another call, or I can read my text? Okay, there's no call. I have a text here which says, I feel the gentleman needs to be a little more patient with this government. This government has only been in power for nine short months, and I'm sure that the work will start in Abaco shortly. Is this the work in Abaco urgent? Do you have time to wait? Roscoe, can you wait another six, seven, eight months before the government start doing something more tangible? Can you give this administration more time? 
I hey, I don't have a choice in it. it, it they're going to yeah. take all the time yeah. they want, um, which is a fact. There, my my question, and you know, you you've been in for eight months now. You made all these promises. You increase your travel budget, which could have been used to help Abaco out. I, you know what? A new day. Oh, come on, man. It's just like every slogan party comes up with. You know what? It is a new day. Why don't you treat Abaco and get Abaco go in the DRA? They are non existing right now. Social services, non existent in doing things over here. What's going on? How, how much longer do we actually have to wait? You just had a budget, uh, de, you know, debate in, in the House. What, what, what are your plans? Yes, we know of some plans for Ministry of Housing. I, I, I understand that. Some of that was, it is good. But you start in Nassau when you know that Abaco is crippled and Abaco has a need for it. But you start these in NASA. I think their priorities are are backwards. But, um, but you know, we you are know, NASA I, centric, and we have a central government here. And and and, but but I understand your point. And I have another caller here who I want to quickly ask some questions. So go ahead, caller. Let me just quickly ask a question to my guest. Hello, CA. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Listen, I have a question as to whether or not you know what Abaco has went through. One of the things Abaco and Grand Bahamas went through that no one ever talked about, it is a tsunami that came into those islands and took houses and human beings out with it. They only talk about the hurricane and the lightning and all the tornadoes and all that, but they never talk about the tsunami. And listen, the hell would those people been through and they still being traumatized by it? Any sensible government should give those people a two-year exemption to try and get the, the island back. As a matter of fact, Abaco was one of the leading islands in the Bahamas who was helping New Providence along with Grand Bahama to keep up the revenue of the country. All right? And if you can't let Abaco go down, man. If Abaco needs an opportunity to rebuild and get back, their structure together, the economy could be stronger. We need to give them the two year, a year and a half to two year uh, exemption so things to get rebuilt back together, CA. And I agree with you. I actually, I'm willing to lobby for it. I have another caller there. Patch, that, patch them straight through so I can get all of them in. Go ahead, caller. Thank you very much. Oh, please. They're gone. Um, Ken, how is the business community prepared for this hurricane season? Um, are you concerned? Obviously, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, everyone's concerned. Um, you know, there's still, you know, we have two massive debris sites that still have all the debris from um, Dorian sitting there in piles that are still feet high, still, and not not been touched. They've just been piled there, and they're sitting there. One of them right across the street from Spring City, which you know, if we get if we get any kind of wind, then you know, you've got you know, literally hundreds of thousands of tons of debris that could be flying across the, the street into Spring Close City. Close to 40 acres. Yeah, 40 acres. And the, the same with that in the north, just south of the Treasure Key Airport. Same thing, 40, 40 foot, 50 foot high piles of debris that, are, that have been untouched. Um, in terms of, you know, are, are is the, the business community prepared? I think we're about as prepared as we can be. Um, I would say that I think on the whole, People in Abaco, having been through Dorian, we're probably better prepared this hurricane season than anybody else in this country. And before I get to this next caller, Roscoe, I, I, watch me be flippant and forgive me for this. This is, is intentional, this political question. I, I know that the farm and other shantytown type areas are building their structure bigger, better, more improved. Would you say they are prepared for another hurricane? No, they... I, I would say that they will be in just as much trouble as what they were before, because how do we know some of the, some of the houses on the farm? Yes, they, they might be up to structural code, but others, let me say this CA, if a category two to three hits Abaco, 
be in a world of trouble. Mm. Um, because they're, like Ken said, with the lay down sites, but also with the reconstruction. Um, I've seen some houses that are being built by certain uh, church groups are not up to code. And that's going to be addressed Monday. Um, but I'm, I'm worried. Uh, we have two hurricane shelters. Caps is one of them. And... Uh, Friendship Tabernacle. If you're lucky, they both might be able to hold a total of maybe 600 people. Okay. So um, thank you very much for being my guest, by the way. And I appreciate you making time for me. This is Guardian Radio in the AM. This is C.A. Nuri. And I just didn't know that the situation in Abaco was still dire as it is. And um, I appreciate my guest for giving me some insight on it, that we in Nassau can at least petition and lobby on their behalf that we must save Abaco. We must make Abaco great again. 